O Canada. In today's Disney dining review, we're eating at Le Cellier Steakhouse at the Canada Pavilion in Epcot. This Disney dining review is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, the best way is by booking a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote. You can also support us and get exclusive Diz team content through our Patreon. So head over to patreon.com slash Unlimited for more information. Now, before we get to the review, I want to start with some Le Cellier fast facts. Now, Le Cellier Steakhouse is a signature dining experience at Walt Disney World, which means you have to use two table service credits if you are using the Disney dining plan. Uh, signature menu items at this restaurant include the Canadian cheddar cheese soup, the Le Cellier filet mignon, and maple creme brulee. Now, the restaurant itself is inspired by the wine cellars of the Grand Chateau style hotels in Canada. The restaurant opened in, uh, of course, 1982, October 1st of 1982, as a buffeteria before switching its focus to deli sandwiches in 1995. And then in 1997, it became the steakhouse we know and potentially love today. Now, maybe we'll learn more fun facts about Le Cellier as we're eating our way throughout this review. But for now, let's put on our stretchy pants. It's time to eat. I've never been in this building before, and it is nice, warmly lit, cool, away from the awful Florida sun. So I already enjoy that aspect of it. But I don't think people care about what I think about that. I think people care about what I've been eating and drinking. So um, we ordered some appetizers here. Um, for me, I thought the fried cauliflower was calling my name. Now the fried cauliflower is described on the menu as a tahini espuma, pine nuts and radish for $16. Um, I'll let everyone else mention the other appetizers that they got, but I thought this thing was phenomenal. Like, it was so delicious. I would come back here and get this again in the heartbeat. It had a bunch of, like, really big pieces of cauliflower in it. The sauce in it was just so, so good. I feel like the, the pine nuts was, um, was um, like a um, brittle. Brittle. I was like, I couldn't remember the word. Um, that was like good, but I, I just, I, I loved every little bit of it. And then also, thank you very much. I got a drink to go with that as well that I really, really enjoyed, which was the Ottawa Apple, which is tap 357 maple rye whiskey, apple infusion, and cranberry for $15. It was very good. It was very red. It was, um, so I feel like sometimes when there's like, I see like apple drinks on a menu, like an apple teeny or something like that, it's usually like a very, I feel like they lean into like the Granny Smith like sour apple aspect of it, but for me, I felt like this drink was like a deep apple flavor, like the red, like deep red apple flavor, like so much so that I was like, I would come back and get this drink in a heartbeat. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I have not had this maple rye whiskey before. I am a, like, I love bourbon and whiskey and stuff like that. So I was like to try something new and I felt like I could taste it in the drink. So it, it was good. And I'm not a big maple fan. So I feel like the, but the maple with that like apple and cranberry, it kind of all blended together beautifully. And it definitely, um, Hannah tried it and she said it tasted like the holidays. And I definitely agree. It definitely had that like November in New England or upstate New York, you know, like just the, the leaves are blowing and you're sitting there on your porch and, you know, I don't know, that's a dream, a, a thing I will never have. So, um, but you know what I'll have? Another one of those drinks, because it was that good. Here comes the hurricane. So Martini Mom today decided to go rogue because, you know, I'm just feeling wild. We're having lunch at this nice steakhouse at lunchtime. And uh, I got the Windsor Old Fashioned is my beverage. And this comes with, of course, Canadian whiskey uh, with muddled fruit, chocolate, and orange bitters. That's interesting to me. A splash of soda and um, a gourmet maraschino cherry. And a, um, it is a classic with a Canadian twist. And that was $17. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was a very good old fashioned. It was unique. I was a little thrown by um, the soda water in the description, but I feel like it added just I don't know, a, a nice um, layer of like, I don't know. Lightness. like a, like Yeah, it made a little bit lighter, gave it a, a tiny bit of fizz. Um, the orange bitters, I definitely got the chocolate. I don't know, I'm not sure that I got that, but I mean, I love chocolate, so I'm happy for it. Um, always love those delicious cherries. And I thought this was wonderful. And I also think $17, this was a crafted cocktail. I feel like that's actually not a bad deal. 
for Disney. I also think if you, like, Old Fashioned is not always my go-to drink, and I feel like this was a good enough Old Fashioned, but was different enough that if you maybe are, like, curious about Old Fashions or thinking about ordering one, this would be more of, like, an intro into Old Fashioned. So, anyways, 10 out of 10, I would get that again. I also really enjoyed, I had a sip of Rhino's Ottawa Apple, and anything that tastes like the holidays, I just absolutely adore. So, that would be on my list as well for next time. So the end to my bevy. Moving on to my appetizer. When in Rome, you get the Canadian cheddar cheese soup. And maybe I shouldn't have done this because you know you can get the small sample at Food and Wine Festival, but I just love it. And the problem with Food and Wine Festival is like it's usually pretty hot, and you're eating this you know little paper cup of hot cheese soup on a trash can, and it's hot. So I was like, you know what? I really just want to sit down and enjoy this and dip my pretzel bread in it. The price on this is $13. And again, I feel like actually that's not a bad price. I don't remember how much it costs for the food and wine portion, but I want to say it's, you know, I don't know, maybe $8. And so I feel like for a little bit more to get a better serving, also be able to like properly enjoy it was great. Um, I will just go ahead and tell you that I loved every appetizer that we got. And we haven't gotten our entrees yet, but I almost feel like if you're here and you're just trying to escape the heat and do something a little more relaxing, I think it would be a great place to come in and just get appetizers and a cocktail. Um, I did choose to get a cocktail. One thing I will say though, the wine list here is phenomenal. They have a lot of the Disney family wines, which I feel like you used to see more of maybe pre-pandemic, um, but I saw Silverado on there. I saw Fess Parker. I saw, what is Kurt Russell's wine, Goji? For Goldie Hawn. Anyways, that was on here. So actually, despite it being a Canadian steakhouse, there were a lot of great California wines on the list. Um, and most of them you could get by the glass. Um, Skywalker was on there. I had a fun story about that. It's very expensive. Goldie. What was that? Goji Goldie. Oh, Goji Goldie. Goldie. I can't say that. Anyways, come get your Goldie Hawn uh, <laughs> wine here in Canada. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I am very impressed so far. I, I have been here, I think within, I think it's been two years since I've been here. And I don't know if it's maybe not as crowded this time, but like it just feels, like I remember last time the tables being really crowded and um, it being kind of loud. And I'm just, I'm having a great time so far. So I'm excited for my entree. Here's to Teresa. All righty. I was invited at the last minute. <laughs> I'm happy I was, always happy to be here. I'm happy with the choice we made. So I, I don't normally drink in the middle of the day like some people, but I went with the Victorian <laughs> raspberry and it was a Canadian vodka with Sprite, raspberry preserves and a fresh squeezed lime juice for $17. And I am still enjoying it. It's, it's fruity, it's good, it's pink, it's my color. Um, I was gonna go with the Ottawa Apple, which I had tried some of Rhino's, which was really good too. But this is light, it's very light, and I don't feel like I'm drinking at all, so I might have another one. So I was looking at some other things on here. Um, the Fest Parker interested me, but someone talked me out of that one. So that's what I went with my drinks. I'm not a drinker, but this is nice. It's very refreshing. For my appetizer, I went with the Heirloom Beets, which was goat cheese, almonds, crispy prosciutto with a sherry vinaigrette for $15. It um, was beautiful. It was good. The crispy prosciutto was really good with the goat cheese on it. Goat cheese was, little goat cheese ball was good on its own. Pop it in like a meatball. It was amazing. It was good on the bread. Um, you can't go wrong with goat cheese for me. And I, th th I think the almonds added a little bit to it. So, and there were beets on there. There was, for a beet called heirloom beets, that wasn't the the, um, the star. The star for yeah, you're right. That wasn't the star for me. So, but they were good. There was I think three different types of beets. They were fresh. They were crisp. It was all good. So I enjoyed it. I would definitely get the heirloom beets again. And I tried um, what Rhino had too. I also enjoyed the cauliflower. I didn't try the cheddar cheese soup. I've had that in the past and enjoyed it, but I wasn't feeling that today. So, yeah, I would definitely get what I had again. Waiting for my. Uh, entree to arrive. I've been ultra hard on the fin du monde lately and always in my life, so I figured what better time than now to order the fin du monde, only to find out 
it's actually not being served currently. They've been out of it for a couple days, so I had to uh, switch paths and I ended up going with the uh, Collective Arts Brewing Good Monster Hazy New England style IPA. It served out of a can and I've had Collective Arts beers before. I didn't realize they were out of Ontario. I don't know how I missed that. I did. Uh, it's $12 and it's a solid New England IPA. I mean, it's a double IPA, so 8%. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I don't I don't get the Canadian feels from it. I feel like I'm, you know, in a juicy New England area, but I still, uh, you know, I, I thought it went really, really nicely with the bread because Teresa alluded to it, but no one really talked about it. Uh, the bread service here uh, comes with lunch and you get a pretzel bread, which I had Hannah dip some of my pretzel bread into her uh, cheese soup, which I highly recommend that. And then there was also a sourdough multi-grain bread and the butter that's served with it is like a maple butter with salt on there. It was a little too sweet for my taste, but pretzel bread A plus with cheese soup. And uh, for my appetizer, I didn't get anything off the appetizers, but there are two poutine offerings here, a signature poutine and a beef bourguignon poutine. If it has signature in the menu, I'm gonna go for that. So that's what I went for, the Le Cellier signature poutine, fresh cut French fries, Canadian cheddar cheese curds, truffle, red wine reduction for $15. The red wine reduction did make it a little bit sweet, but I thought the truffle helped to balance that out. Uh, the Canadian che uh, cheese curds did feel fresh, but in my opinion, they could have been a little bit on the warmer side. They didn't have quite the squeak consistency that I like, but they were they were close there. If they would have been a little bit warmer for just a little while longer, uh, would have been nice. Uh, the French fries were cut very thin, but ultimately, I don't think it had too much of an impact on the overall dish. Like I. You know, it's better than a lot of poutines that you can get around Walt Disney World. It felt at least somewhat authentic uh, compared to some of the random poutines you can get at like the daily poutine. I liked it, I would get it again. Even $15 might be a small portion, but it felt fancier than just normal poutine. For my entree today, I went with the mignon, filet mignon. I don't know why I had to say it like that, but it's the Le Salier filet mignon. And it is described as coming with mushroom risotto, there's a pomodoraccio tomato, and a truffle butter sauce, all for $62. It was the, I believe it was the recommended dish. I did have a bite of everybody's um, food at the table as well. The thing, the reason why I always order a filet mignon is because in my life, I, I'm not a fancy person. I've never ordered steak at restaurants really ever until I lived at Disney and I ordered a filet one time well. And that was a huge mistake. And, um, and then at uh, Steakhouse 55 that is no longer with us from Disneyland, I've ordered there. So it's not a common thing for me and I don't usually eat like meat on the bone. So the filet is for me is in my wheelhouse. Um, and it was pretty good. It was, um, it was very well cooked. Um, I, I felt like maybe it could have been seasoned just like slightly more, but it was a nice cut of meat. Um, that's what they say about me. Um, but then uh, the mushroom risotto underneath was really good as well, except for my one like minor critique about that is that I felt like it said truffle butter sauce. I didn't really feel like the truffle came through a lot in that one. And I love truffle, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I can never have too much truffle, but um, it was good. I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like, but I, I don't want to say what they got, but I think for me, my favorite dish was Hannah's dish. And then I would say Teresa's, then mine, then Craig's. So that's how I'd rank them. I don't think anything was like particularly bad or anything like that. I just, I really enjoyed them in that order and I would 100% come back for what Hannah got. But we also did get um, some enhancements because we have to, obviously. Um, there were several on this menu, but ultimately we went with the Canadian cheddar cream spinach for 1050 and the bacon smoked Gouda macaroni and cheese for 14. I thought both of these were actually really, really good. Um, the bacon smoked Gouda macaroni and cheese, I'm just realizing now it had, I don't think I got any like bacon in it, but it, ha it did have a little bit of that like smoky flavor to it. But the thing I love is it com comes in like a skillet and it had the nice like crispy, crunchy top on top of it. I, you can't go wrong when you got that baked macaroni and cheese like that. And even after it cooled down, I had one more bite before they like kind of took it away. And I was still like, it, it, it sat well. I feel like a mac and cheese, you judge it based on how well it sits, right? Because if it's only good when it's hot, it's not, it's not quality. 
and this was quality. But the Canadian cheddar cream spinach was also really good. I was actually very pleasantly surprised by that. I thought, I used to like, when I was a kid, I like spinach, like cream spinach a lot. And I don't think I've had it since then, but this was like, this was solid. I like, I, I actually really, really enjoyed it. So I, I'd recommend both of those sides for sure. And Hannah's dish, my favorite, for sure. So I think I had the winning entree. I, that's what you said, at least. So I had the bison strip loin, um, which I don't know what this is. A uh, kabocha squash? Kabocha? Yeah. Kombucha squash? Yeah. So anyways, it was squash. Uh, roasted cauliflower, Jerusalem artichoke, black garlic sage, Bernays sauce, and that was $54. Um, the recommendation is medium rare, and it definitely was. It was flavorful, it was tender. Um, I think if you're intimidated by eating bison, I wouldn't be. I thought the flavor was great. It's not like you're gonna get a gamey taste from it. And then the squash that was served with it and the cauliflower and the artichoke was um, kind of served as a side and almost kind of, it wasn't the same flavor as the appetizer, mm. the cauliflower, but just kind of the presentation in some ways was similar. But I thought that was great. And I think it kind of balanced it out because the bison with the Bernays sauce was on the heavier side and that was a little bit lighter of a side so i thought that was great um i've only ever had the filet from here um from the entrees and i feel like the bison tripling i i would absolutely get that again um i've had bison a couple times um i think the last time i was actually out in yellowstone so i'm hoping assuming that was fresh i know yeah i've been to national park and uh, <laughs> i'm fancy bougie <laughs> Everybody likes to say I'm bougie, but I'm from Mississippi and I dip most of my food in ranch, so I'm not convinced that I am. Bougie. Mm. <laughs> you hear, heard it here first. Um, yeah, so no, I thought that was phenomenal. It's also something different, you know? Like, I don't feel like you can order a great bison dish other than like a bison cheeseburger. I feel like that's the most, yeah. you know, common version of it. And then you're like, is this bison? I thought that was fantastic. I also feel like price point on that was good. I didn't eat all of my $54 for Disney prices mm -hmm. and for a signature restaurant. Um, I wasn't able to finish all my portion. Keep in mind, we did have a lot of appetizers and I did have a roll and all the things. But um, yeah, I thought that was great. The enhancements, I think the Canadian cheddar cream spinach, hard to say for me, was my favorite. It's funny, it says cheddar and I don't know I don't know that I really got like a strong cheddar, like a sharp cheddar taste per se, but it was different and it was um, very good. That was the winner to me. The um, bacon smoked Gouda macaroni and cheese, I mean, how can you go wrong? It's bacon, it's smoked Gouda, all the best things. But I still feel like the cream spinach was better and a little bit more unique. So if I had to pick between the two, that would be my vote. But you can't ever go wrong with mac and cheese. So again, everything I've had has been 10 out of 10 for me. Spoiler on my review later. All right, I went with the halibut. I know, steakhouse, fish. I just, I wasn't feeling it. It's midday, I wasn't. And it's what Craig told me to get, so. <laughs> um, I went with the halibut, and it came with leeks, roasted onion, fennel, onion subis, and crispy salsify. It's like a french fry on top. It was awesome. When it first came to the table, I could smell the fish, and it kind of threw me. I thought, ooh, it's a little too fishy. But as before I started eating, I, that, it went away. It was just an, a moment thing, so it, it disappeared. It was, I think it was blackened on top, right? Was that what I would call that blackened yeah. fish? It fell apart. It was so awesome. It was, it was some seriously good halibut. Halibut, 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 good fish. So um, I would definitely get it again. Um, I was I wanted the the fillet, but you know, Rhino got it. I tried it. It wasn't as good as mine. I think I I think I won out personally on this one. I would definitely get this again. And it was uh, forty seven dollars, which you know, it's a little pricey for me for a piece of fish, but it was good. Of the sides or the enhancements. I did not try the mac and cheese. I forgot about it once I started spooning down the spinach. And the, um, yeah, the Canadian cheddar cream spinach, I'm with Hannah on that. I didn't taste a lot of cheese in it. It was just creamy, it was good, it was, it was yummy. Just give me a bowl of it, I'm good. Good to go. Thank you, ma'am, my creme brulee 
I just arrived. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> I picked the dud of the group, unfortunately. On paper, it sounds delicious. The dry aged pork chop with goat cheese polenta, smoked tomato jam, citrus butter, pea tendrils for $44. I had it cooked medium and uh, it was kind of all over the place. It was obviously a big thick piece of pork chop, uh, but like some, it was medium, but then some parts of the pork chop were definitely like over well done. It was just, it, it was kind of a struggle. There wasn't a lot of consistency with it. Uh, much like Rhino's filet, I felt like the pork chop was a little bit under seasoned. So it was just kind of missing that pop. Like I can't believe I'm sitting here saying that a dry aged pork chop from Le Cellier wasn't as good as the one that Rhino had last year from Be Our Guest, but that's the situation we're dealing with. I did think that the goat cheese polenta really paired nicely with it and the smoked tomato jam did add a nice like sweetness to the dish overall, but it just wasn't my favorite. I have to, I have to agree with his ratings right away. Uh, Hannah's bison strip loin was incredible. Uh, Fifty-four dollars to me, that's a steal for like a really, really well cooked piece of bison. Uh, and Teresa's halibut for forty-seven dollars, like I would also get that too. I mean, Pacific halibut, that's uh, that's not a cheap piece of fish. So I think it's actually pretty fair for Walt Disney World. And then Rhino's fillet would have come next. I mean, the hard part with that, it's just that sixty-two dollar fillet. It's hard to like get over that bridge of it costing that much money. Uh, but you know, it still was, it was, still was tasty. It was a really nice piece of meat, just needed a little bit more seasoning. So yeah, the entree, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I feel let down, but I'm happy that I got to try a little bit of everyone's. So that way I know what I want next time I come back. For my dessert, I went with the profiterol, profiterol, profiterol. I don't remember how they said it, but it is described as crackling, comma, cheesecake inlay, comma, Marionberry, comma, Sorel, $14. Um, think a giant puff pastry filled with a very, very fluffy, light, like cheesecake whip inside with the Marionberry in there. And then on top, it was like, a, like I would say like a macaron size of the, um, of the Sorel, which was, also like a cheesecake consistency, but the whole thing I thought was, it was really good. It was light, it was fluffy, and it was a pretty big portion, I felt like, so it was a solid choice. I don't know that there was anything on this dessert menu that like looking at it, if I had come by myself and we weren't doing this as a review that it was screaming that I was like, I have to have, but I will say this, the item that Teresa got, I would not have normally ordered because it, it does involve maple, and again, like I said, I'm not the biggest maple fan, but I tried it and this thing was delicious. So um, I think she had the winning dessert for me. But yeah, I, but I'm, so I am happy that we did it this way. So that gave me a little taste of everything, which I don't think normally, like I said, would have screamed out and been like, I need to get that. So um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not unhappy with my decision. It's Martini Mom back again. I had to redo this because I got, I thought I ordered one ice wine and I didn't. I ordered the more expensive ice wine because that's what the server recommended and that's what happens when you come to a fine establishment such as this one. So anyways, pardon my French again. I actually had the Chateau de... Back to you, Craig. Anyways, it was $22 for the glass. It was a fairly small portion. Um, ice wine is one of those things that they serve at the festivals. They have several options here. So I think it is one of those things that's unique to try. Um, if you never had ice wine, I'm not a sommelier by any means, um, I would describe it as like a sweeter white wine. Almost like, to me, it kind of tastes like a Prosecco without the fizz, maybe. So it was very light, was very refreshing. Price point on that, I don't think I would do it again unless it's one of those special occasion things that you enjoy getting here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just still, still so full. So would I get, get it again? No, but it was a nice, you know, ending to a special meal. All right. Mother Teresa here. I finished my meal. I'm quite full. I did have the maple creme brulee, which was the winner, winner chicken dinner tonight. Um, it came with gooseberries on the top. I was going to show you the empty bowl, which Craig was licking, but the woman took it away. So it was, <laughs> Charlene took it away from us. It was really good. It was a, I knew coming into this today that that was 
going to be on the menu, and I knew that's what I was going to get. Whether anyone else wanted it or not, it was going to be mine. And I got it. I couldn't finish it, though, because there was a lot of it. It wasn't as maple-y as I thought it was going to be, which is fine. But that was crazy maple-y. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I expected maybe, I don't know. I mean, it was good. I, it was great, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was a good ending to my fantastic meal here at Epcot World Showcase. Finally, I had the Victorian Garden Sorbet. Uh, it was a strawberry sorbet with hibiscus meringue and garden blooms for $12. I was making the joke that it was just gonna be like a little tiny like aperitif sorbet, but no, this was like a, a big, big scoop of sorbet. Like if you got it at an ice cream store, like it, it was bordering on like a double scoop size. Uh, so yeah, I mean, sorbet, you're kind of worried, like, is it going to be worth the price? I actually thought this was. It was really fresh. Um, the It just, I, I mean, it kind of gave me that little bit of sweetness, but also was like a nice palate cleanser after such a heavy, heavy meal. And when you ate it with the hibiscus meringue, uh, it just, it added an extra pop of fruit flavor for it. I can't believe I ordered the sorbet, but I don't regret it at all. Really good sorbet. But You're not sore about that's, I'm not sore about the sorbet. But that's it for uh, our breakdown of all the food. I think we're gonna head out outside so our server is, uh, you know, can be done with us after such a long, long meal. And we'll give you our final ratings of Le Cellier Steakhouse. Now it's time for the numbers. And uh, so for my, uh, my rating, uh, we always start with the ambiance. I have it at about a seven and a half. I, feel like there's not really much to the ambiance. I mean, but here's the thing, it's inside. Uh, the lighting, you know, it is dim lighting, it's warm lighting, um, but it's kind of a nice respite when it's a hot summer day or a hot regular Florida day, I guess, which is every day here. So it's not bad. It's just kind of like no thrills. So I give it like a seven and a half. Um, the food preparation and presentation, I gave that a nine. I thought everything looked beautiful. I thought, uh, like, literally, I really, I guess it could have probably been a 10, but it was, I wouldn't want to be like, oh, something blew my socks off. But I thought everything was um, presented and prepared nicely. I thought maybe, maybe the desserts, maybe it was like, th those could have been like bumped up just a little bit. But in terms of quality of taste, uh, I have that at a nine. Uh, I thought literally like everything I ate was pretty solid. Like every bite I had of everybody else's meal was good, except for, you know, like I said, even though Craig's was definitely my least favorite of them, it wasn't like I didn't like it. I didn't think it was bad. So I thought literally like the desserts, the food and the appetizers, there was not a bad thing I ate, I felt like today. So I give that a nine. The service I give a seven. I feel like it was fine, but it it wasn't like it was. I didn't feel like it was like warm and fuzzy and like that Disney thing. Um, I felt like the hostess who walked us to our seats was was wonderful. So, props to her. Uh, and then the cost, I give it about a six and a half. I feel like I like I said, I don't go to a lot of steakhouses, so I'm not. I can't tell you the regular price of this sort of stuff. It does feel very expensive. It, I mean, not feel very expensive. It is an expensive experience. However, I do feel like you are getting really quality food. I feel like I enjoyed myself. So it's one of those like you got to trade the good with the bad, right? So, but I'm not going to acknowledge that this is not a place to go when you're maybe like, you know, on a budget or, you know, with a big group of people or something like that. But I would, I think, come back for like a special occasion for sure. I'd come back and there were things I would eat and that I would love that drink. I'd get that drink again. I'd do what Hannah said earlier in this video. I think I'd come back to appetizers and maybe some drinks and like maybe split an entree or if you even get that far. But yeah, character interaction, zero out of 10. No Mickey Mouse. Uh, but that, that brings us to uh, 39 out of 50. So a 3.9 out of 5. I honestly thought maybe it'd be a little bit higher, but I think the price dings it just a little bit. And again, like I said, it wasn't like it was bad service. It just felt like a little, I don't know, just a little more to be desired, I think, which I feel really guilty and bad about saying. But um, but no, I, I thought um, I thought it was good. I, I As someone who had never been here before, I would return. All right, here we go. Ambiance, I give it a solid 8. I love Canada. I love the feel of this place, the coolness, the dark cellar feel to it. Food, I would give it a solid nine for presentation. It was beautiful. 
I didn't want to touch it, it was too pretty. I took pictures of it and I'm not a picture taking person. No one will ever see it with me. I'll lay in bed at night and look at these beautiful pictures and remember the food that I had and I ate. Quality, okay, bring it on. Quality was a good eight. It was, it was worth diving into everything. I, I think I was a winner on everything I got. The halibut, the dessert, everything was amazing. Service, good seven. There was a brief moment that we couldn't find her for our enhancements but she came through and gave us a good good seven on that. Cost, this is where I'd go down a little bit with a six. It's pricey. Um, to bring a full meal here, a full family here to dine, it would, it would be an event, and I will never bring my husband, but I'll come back. So that's a good 38 out of 50. So come on, it's a perfect place to be, right? I love it. Starting with ambiance, I gave it a six, and I maybe would have scored it higher, except, I mean, the theme is literally that you're in a cellar, which, I mean, in all fairness, is the name of the restaurant. It is a signature restaurant. It does kind of have that um, elevated feel, and, you know, there are candles on the table, and it has that cozy kind of steakhouse vibe to it. So I get it. It's nice. Um, but is it anything... I'm at Disney, no, like uh, when I think of great signature restaurants that have good ambiance, I think of maybe like I, uh, California Grill, for example, where you have this like awesome picture, perfect view of Magic Kingdom. So I feel comfortable with the six. Um, I think especially during a hot day, being able to come in there and cool off and it's peaceful and nice, that's great. Um, moving on to food preparation and presentation. So I've kind of been hard on dining reservations, which is funny for me because I love Disney, but I'm gonna give this a 10, a straight 10. Uh, and simply because I felt like everything was elevated, like they took care and everything had something a little bit extra to it that made it feel like we were um, in a signature fine dining restaurant. Um, and then in terms of like preparation, everything looked like it was made with care. So I have no complaints there. Speaking of that, quality of taste, I'm also gonna give a 10. I had the knockout bison, um, which I thought was amazing. Everything I had, I loved. No complaints on the way it was cooked or the taste or the flavors. I didn't feel like I needed to like add salt to anything or anything was too salty or whatever. I, I was very happy with exactly what I got. Um, and then moving on to service, I gave it a seven. Uh, at first I gave it a six just because I feel like our server, um, I don't know, I, I'm trying to figure this whole thing out. Like when you do a dining review, I'm going to be honest, it's a little weird, like it takes a little bit longer, you film stuff, you take pictures of stuff, like it's not just somebody coming in, having an hour long meal and just getting out. So I mean, giving credit to the server, like that's a little hard to work with. I knew she had other tables and we were there for a while. but. I don't know, when you're paying this much for a meal, like there are a couple of times I wish I like needed a water refill. Um, things like that weren't, I probably would have scored it a little bit higher. Although the, everybody else we interacted with, like even the host and the um, cast member who walked us out to our table and um, also the chef came by and checked in on us. Everybody was very friendly. Um, so, you know, I, I overall, I feel like service is pretty good. Cost, I'm gonna give an eight, um, which also is pretty high, because I think, you know, it's a signature restaurant, but, and the prices are high. Like, it's it's an expensive restaurant, but you know that going into it. And everything that we got, I felt like was unique, and the presentation was great, it tasted great, the portion sizes were great. Um, and I also compare it to, like, my entree was under $60. There's a lot of character meals that are, you know, $50, $60, and the food is terrible. And I get you're at Disney, you're paying for the characters, but I think if you're looking for like a date night meal or a special occasion restaurant, I feel like the value was, was pretty good. Um, so that brings my overall total to 41 out of 50 or 4.1 out of five. I think, um, I feel like La Cellier used to be like that hot ticket restaurant at Epcot, like a must do, for special occasions, I almost, I could be wrong, but I almost feel like it's the festivals, there's more of them, they last longer, they have become more popular. Maybe people aren't dining at table service restaurants maybe as much at Epcot, maybe they are. But I think this is a nice alternative because anytime that I come to festivals, I end up spending a lot of money. Like you end up doing like 
five, $10 items at a couple booths and like, you could have paid for a nice meal here. So I think this is a great alternative um, if maybe you aren't a festival person. Again, summer is coming, it's hot. You know, maybe you use that money to come inside and have a nice relaxing meal instead. So all in all, I will be back to La Cellier. I feel like after bragging about this meal, my husband's gonna be super jealous and wanna come back. So this would be like a great um, restaurant for like I said, a date night, an anniversary, Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever. So I had a great time today. For ambiance, you know, I ended up giving it a seven out of 10 because it's, it's not the greatest restaurant. You know, it is a wine cellar. It's a little bit on the dark side, but I feel like what kind of redeemed it for me, uh, for us, was that we were seated at a table where there was a light right over us, so it was a little bit brighter, made it uh, just a little bit more enjoyable than maybe out in the dark corners of this restaurant. But, you know, it's not, it's not the uh, prettiest by any means, especially for a signature restaurant. Uh, but I don't know. It also kind of has that feeling of an old steakhouse, too, where it's just like dark and you don't know what time of day you went in. You don't know what time you're leaving. Uh, for food prep and presentation, I'm giving it a nine. I feel like it, it man, on, a, on, on another day, I probably could have given it a, a 10 out of 10, but somewhere in my mind, I'm like, well, yeah, it, it looks great for this restaurant, but like there's still could have been a little bit uh, of pluses here and there, like stuff like the poutine wasn't necessarily the, the prettiest looking and how it was presented and just a couple things here and there, but it was about as close to perfect as you could get. Uh, for quality and taste, I'm at an eight just because mine, you know, had some issues with it. So uh, if I would have had Hannah's, I'd be sitting here saying a 10 out of 10 or even Teresa's, I'd be saying a 10 out of 10. But for what I had, it was right at that eight out of 10. For service, I'm actually, apparently, I had a different perspective from everyone else because I'm actually giving this a 10 out of 10. Uh, I literally had no problems whatsoever with anyone. The fact that the, the chef was walking around checking on tables, everyone in the host area was incredible. And to me, our server literally kind of just let us go at our own pace. I was drinking like sparkling water. so. For me, it's not like I wanted nonstop refills. It was filling me up so much that I'm like, I didn't have issues with water refills. Anything that was on the menu that we asked to be explained was explained. I, it's honestly, for me, it's it was the type of service that I like where it was very hands-off unless we had questions for it. But I don't know what other people expect, so that's that's on them and, and, and what's going on in their minds. But uh, then for cost, I'm giving it a seven and you know, it is, uh, we'll say the 19th time here, it's expensive, but honestly, I don't think it's that expensive when you factor in. Every single one of like the steak entrees also basically came with a side dish. You don't have to add on the enhancements, even though we chose to for the review to be more thorough, but uh, you know, at a steakhouse, you're going to see these $60, uh, $50 steaks that just come slapped down on a plate with nothing else and you need the side dishes. So the fact that we had something included in them, I, I think that already takes it up a little bit there. Uh, it just, I, I think for me, it was like some stuff just didn't feel fair in the pricing. Uh, some, some, some portions and some dishes just felt better than others. So I feel like seven is a nice fair area for it. So I landed at a 41 out of 50 or a 4.1 out of five. So that is going to do it for this Disney dining review. I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on the Cellier Steakhouse, the Canada Pavilion at Epcot's World Showcase. If you did and you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Uh, and you can always get exclusive Diz Team content over at patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comment section. And if you are listening to this, subscribe to podcasts, to this podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, and leave us a rating and review when possible. But that's it for us here at Epcot today. We'll see you again next time. We're back with another Disney dining review. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry. Yummy, yummy.